Welcome fans, in this video I'll be talking about HTML versus other markup languages. So HTML, Hypertext Markup Language, is not the only markup language for web development and document formatting. I'm going to talk about others in this video. Understanding how HTML compares to other markup languages can provide insight into its unique features and how it fits the broader landscape of web and document technologies. So let's start by talking and reviewing a little bit about HTML. HTML is primarily used for creating and structuring content on the web. It defines elements like a web page, such as heading, paragraphs, link images, videos, images, and, and, other, and, and other elements like tables and forms. So what is the structure of this markup language, HTML? It uses a tag-based structure with opening and closing tags to define different elements. So it is opening and closing tag system. So, uh, so it, it is an so it is a, it is an integration. It works with CSS for styling and JavaScript for interactivity. Now let's talk about another markup language. It's called XML. XML. It stands for Extensively Markup Language. It is used to store and transport data. It is a flexible language that allows users to create their own tags. So HTML has, has, has its own tags. And with XML, you can create your own tags. Uh, how does the structure looks compared to tags from HTML? Well, XML is a highly structured and emphasizes data organization and hierarchy. It requires each document to be well formed. So what is it used for? It is commonly used for data integer interchange between systems, configuration files, and more. So now it is good. We have a language for our own tags that we can expand our HTML basic tags. Now let's talk about another, another markup language. It's called XHTML. XHTML stands for Extensively Hypertext Markup Language. What is its purpose? Its purpose is a, is a stricter and more XML compliant version of HTML that we were talking for XML. It was created to ensure that web pages are well formed and can be parsed by XML parsers. That means you have a very, uh, you have a hierarchy. That means that XML parsers can go through that, through all those uh, tags and, and, and structures, HTML structures and XML structures. So how does the structure of an XT, XHTML looks like? It combines HTML 4.1 with XML syntax rules, requiring all tags to be properly closed and nested. That means you have a hierarchy because things you have tags inside tags. So what is the integration for XHTML? It aims to bridge the gap between XML and X, HTML and XML. There is another, it's another, there's another language called Markdown. Markdown is a light, lightweight markup language primarily used for formatting plain text. It's popular for writing documentation, readme files, and context and content for static site generators. So those readme files you can use Markdown. So how does the structure or the syntax look like for Markdown? It uses a simple syntax for common formatting tasks such as headings, lists, and emphasis, making it easy to read in its, in its raw form. So what are it, some of its uses? It is widely used in management systems, version control platforms like GitHub and online forums. See, GitHub is a system where you can store code and you can store documentation, you can store 
and you can do testing. It's a website that a lot of people recommend. I recommend it too. Now let's talk about LaTeX. LaTeX I use it in the I started using it in the university for document for for mathematical publishing of documents. So what is its purpose? LaTeX is a markup language used for typesetting complex documents, particularly in academic and scientific environments. So how does the structure of, of, or the syntax look like? It uses commands and environments to format documents, manage references, and handle complex layouts. You can create books out of with, with LaTeX books, pamphlets, ads. So what are some of its uses? It is an ideal for writing research paper, thesis, and any document that requires precise control over formatting and layout. And the last one I'm going to talk about today is SGML. It stands for a standard, standard generalized markup language. What is its purpose? SGML, a standardized, a standard generalized markup language, is a standard for defining generalized markup languages for documents. It serves as the foundation for both HTML and XML. So as we were as we we're talking, basically a web page is a document. It's a type of document. Just like a, like a thesis for a project for a, for a, for a, for a PhD or for or for writing a book. So what what does the structure look like for SGML? It is highly flexible and customizable, allowing for the definition of various document types and structures. What are what are the uses for it? It is used for large scale publishing and documentation systems. So all these markup languages, <coughs> basically they are, it is used to create a, 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 a document for specific things or for general things or many things for many types of projects, scientific, educational, and entertainment like a web page or like or for like businesses like a like a hospital or like a church or like a school so i hope you like my video and you like what we learned today and please subscribe and see you soon thank you for watching